Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, we're very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and very humble that He is using us to really expand this prophetic mission of prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It really humbles us all as an organization, as an individual, as a jama'ah, that we are able to contribute and we're able to bring to the attention, we are able to preach this beautiful way of life. So I can't say thank, enough thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> this conference, uh, this first of its kind virtual global conference, I say that for a reason because not only we have been able to this time bring all the different orgs, embra uh, embrace, why Islam, gain peace, these are the ICNA projects, but in, in addition to that, other organizations and other, other da'wah uh, arms from all around the world, from, uh, you know, from the UK, from uh, Japan, from New Zealand, from uh, Australia, Latin America, Canada, all these countries. I mean, we have, alhamdulillah, been able to bring all of them. And inshallah, this will prove to be a, a step in a new direction to be able to start this global effort to bring awareness to Islam, to bring awareness to solutions that this beautiful way of life really provides us. Uh, we see the world around us uh, really confused. And I think as Muslims, we are so fortunate, so fortunate that we have the solutions, we have the way, the beautiful way of life that allows us to have that peace and tranquility, even in this time of confusion. Brothers and sisters, over the this past weekend here, alhamdulillah, for the last, uh, you know, I was looking at uh, some of the stats. Uh, there's been about 17 hours of programming, and we've had almost 37 speakers from around the world who spoke to uh, a global audience. So it's it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to change minds and hearts of people around the world, and. Uh, <clears throat> We saw presentations and regarding interfaith, the interfaith conversations that we are having. We we saw presentations when it comes to um, our brothers and sisters. In fact, when I was listening to uh, uh, you know Imam uh, Ahmed from from Japan, and he was pr providing a perspective which was really amazing. And when he started saying, uh, I think uh, Brother Eddie asked him about question about. Uh, uh, about Islam and how people of Japan were were thinking about Islam. He said something was very interesting. Even before 9-11, uh, Japanese uh, society was looking at Islam and questioned a lot of things. And then he gave the reason for that. And that was that the Iraq and Iran war, which uh, the people of Japan looked at and said, why are people from the same faith fighting each, each, each other? And that calls to our attention as, as Muslims all over the world, that everything that we do, we may not recognize the fact that we are ambassadors of Islam. When we say, when a sister is wearing hijab, when, when a brother is uh, you know, in, his, in his garment and he's, he looks like a Muslim, he may not think uh, much about it, but th at the end of the day, he's representing Islam. Whatever our actions are, brothers and sisters, we are representatives of Islam. We are the ambassadors of Islam. So it's amazing when you hear perspectives from around the world. Brother Hamza, Zorta said, I mean, every time I, I listen to his, uh, his presentations, it's really amazing the kind of authority, the kind of confidence and the kind of knowledge he brings to the table when it comes to issues of atheism. Every single speaker that, that we heard over the last couple of days really brought about a perspective that we couldn't have learned on our own. Many a times, they, it's, it's really an effort after years and years of, you know, getting into that topic. And that has been brought to us, alhamdulillah, in the comforts of our home. So we must be very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and should try to look at ways in which how can I, as a human being, how can I, as a believer, 
really contribute towards this, this amazing work, this amazing prophetic mission of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I, I spoke about it yesterday, and I think many of our speakers uh, throughout the, the last couple of days here spoke about this responsibility of Dawah, this responsibility of bringing this beautiful way of life, this responsibility, this uh, concept of oneness of Allah, how that is so integral. And I think Imam Siraj in his last, uh, in, in the last presentation, he said something very profound. He said, one of the most important knowledge is the knowledge about, of Allah. You know, people say about them, it's very important to know yourself, but even more important, the most important thing for a person is to know his creator. Who created me? Who put me here? What is my mission? What am I doing here? All those answers. I can provide a piece of bread for, to, a, to a person and I can provide a piece of, uh, you know, a meal to a person and I may be able to take care of him for that one hour or two hours. Or I can even provide financial assistance and uh, a shelter and food to somebody and I can make someone's life comfortable. But that is, that is temporary. That is temporary, brothers and sisters. But when I provide guidance to someone and the ability to understand their creator, I'm acting upon the hadith of Prophet ﷺ where he says, In yahdillahu bika rajulan wahida khayrun laka min humrin na'am. If Allah were to guide through you a, a single person, then it's much better than you, better for you than the red cheek camels, which was one of the most expensive commodities. In other words, it's better for you than the riches of the world. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> uh, this environment of COVID has really forced us in ways that we could have not have anticipated. It has forced us to reimagine the work of Dawah. And inshallah, <clears throat> we look forward to everyone who's listening today, everyone who spent the last couple of days with us in this conference. We're really looking forward to you to reach out to us. Ikna.org slash baraka, ikna.org slash donate, ikna.org, you know where to go. You know how to find us. I, we really invite you. We want you to be a partner in our effort. We want you to become our arms and our ears and our eyes everywhere. We really want your time, the resources you can provide us. If you are, if you are an expert on social media, we love to hear from you. If you can help us with digital designs, we would love to hear from you. If you can help volunteer at our booths, we'd love to hear from you. If you want to be part of these road trips that we make and uh, uh, you know, Sheikh Hijazi was talking about, we would love to really hear from you. Be a partner in this campaign, brothers and sisters. Be a partner in this campaign to reach out to every single household in America. Brothers and sisters, let's do it before the time is up. Let's try to do whatever we can, whatever we can. And everything that you and I can do, inshallah, will be recorded in the Book of Deeds, inshallah. And on the day that we will need this, the, 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 one, of the, one of the speakers presented such a beautiful way. He said, you know, the brother who invited me to become a Muslim, he would be benefiting from my, from Whatever, even my son who is a hafiz now and who will for generations, inshallah, will continue to benefit mankind with his knowledge of Quran, with his hifz of Quran. That, that brother who gave him or invited him to Islam will continue to benefit from that, from the entire family's impact. I mean, there is no such pyramid scheme ever. On the Day of Judgment, which... There are so many hadith. A person would come and will find a mountain, an entire valley worth of gold and silver. And so, so many different hadith that point to this, this fact that on the Day of Judgment, Allah would present him 
about his good deeds, and he'll say, when did I do these deeds? And then he'll be told, this was the impact of this and this and this and this and this. All the acts of Sadaqah Jariyah, all the acts that, because, because the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises believers that he will continue to pay them. He will, con they will continue to be, you know, taking it, they'll be able to take advantage of and they'll be rewarded. The same reward as the person al al khayri kafairi, the person who is calling other people to good deeds, as is the as the person who is actually doing it. So many examples, and we don't have the time. And I think my time is running out here. So, in conclusion, brothers and sisters, we want you to join us. We want you to join us in this this cause to call humanity to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want you to be our partner. Join us with your, with your time, with your skills, with your resources. Support these projects financially. Really, if you can't do it and you know other people who can do it, please reach out to them. Let them know that Ikna is interested in you. We want you to be part of this journey and inshallah, I hope and pray this, <clears throat> this conference have really sparked, uh, you know, a ray of hope in you in terms of what is, what is coming next. I think if we all of us together bring our resources, bring our imagination, bring our ideas together, we can change this world, brothers and sisters. And at the same time, just remember this. It's all about the effort. It's all about what you and I will do. This is a blessing of this religion that we are not required. We are not responsible for the results. Unlike any other system in this on this world. In this world, we are judged by results. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges us by efforts. If you wake up one day and you have the urge and you have the thought process and you have and you want to do something and you do something about it regardless of what the results are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that. Let's join hands, brothers and sisters, to call people towards Allah. Let's join hands while we have the ability, while we have the strength, the health, and the resources to be able to do that. I thank you, all of you, for joining us for this memorable first virtual conference and inshallah ta'ala, I uh, hope and pray that you found this to be beneficial. I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow us to be part of this prophetic mission. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.